The Senator-elect is joining me now from our Buffalo studio for our latest installment in our series, New Faces. Hello, Senator-elect. How are you? I'm wonderful, Liz. I'm thrilled to be here. And we are thrilled to have you, and thanks so much. So I just want to talk to you about this primary, which was really fascinating. You ended up um, not being beholden to really anyone, particularly not the party structure. So how do you think that will translate when you get to Albany? I think it's wonderful. I'm beholden to the citizens, as it should be. Um, it was it was quite a bit of a challenge. Um, I had never been in a primary before. It was more of a challenge than I thought. But we got a great message out to the citizens of the district. We moved throughout the four counties continuously and then continued that, of course, in the general election. And the citizens responded. And I'm really looking forward to serving them. When you say that you're beholden just to the citizens, does that mean to you that you won't feel that you have to vote in line with, say, the majority or minority leader, whoever that might be? Because we don't know yet, of course, who will be controlling the chamber? Well, it depends on the issue. Um, certainly, all of my decisions will be based upon the best interests of the citizens of the district. If the, the majority or minority leader, uh, if, if their views are in line with uh, putting an end to the corruption in Albany, reducing spending, reducing taxes, the things that are in the best interest of, this, of our citizens, then of course I would support them. But the citizens come first. So, okay, so in, along that same line then, will you be supporting Dean Scalos for leader of the conference? I will. As far as I know, he is the leader. Um, there are no other announced candidates. I've had a number of conversations with him. We've talked about many issues. He recognizes the importance of doing what he can in helping to kickstart the Western New York economy, to support UB 2020, to try to move that along. I look forward to working with him, as, as well as the other members of the Senate. Because we were, there was a brief moment in time, very brief, and I spoke yesterday to Senator Maziarz that he was actually mentioned as a potential leader contender, and uh, now he's saying he's not going to go for it. But it does speak to how Western New York is perhaps becoming more prominent um, going forward. And I think that's because of Carl Palladino. Now, he was not someone that you supported, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I did support Carl. Um, his message of of out-of-control spending, corruption in Albany, lower taxes resonated. Those are the same issues that I campaigned on. He's a very successful businessman, a very shrewd businessman. He's had success. Did I agree with everything that he said or did? Of course not. Um, but he highlighted many things. And if anything, he highlighted the problems in Western New York. And hopefully, we can go to work trying to fix some of them. Okay, so I, forgive me, he did not endorse you, if I'm not mistaken. There was actually a fight between your two primary opponents. He was expected to uh, endorse right. one of them, DiPietro, and he didn't. He ended up uh, endorsing Don Mikowski, who, as I mentioned, was the GOP chairman. Do you think if things had been different and he had, in fact, gone with the quote-unquote Tea Party candidate, uh, DiPietro, that things would be different for you in the end? No, I don't. I've, I've had success over the years my entire life. I, has been honoring the public trust. First, I was a state trooper. Then I was the elected sheriff of Erie County for two terms. And I did very well. I had support of Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, independents. Always tried to make decisions based upon the best interests of the citizens. And as I campaigned throughout the four counties of this 59th district, uh, the, the response was, was wonderful. Um, so to me, who endorsed who really didn't matter. What was important is the endorsement of the citizens. And fortunately, I did get that. And, I, and I, as I mentioned, I look forward to going to serve them. And you also mentioned UB 2020, which, of course, is an issue that uh, pretty much every Western New, New York lawmaker, Democrat, Republican, independent, conservative, whoever, always says that they are uh, very, very bullish on. I'm mm -hmm. just curious what you're going to be doing to try and push that along in Albany, because, of course, it's stalled at the moment. Well, it seems that there's renewed interest in that. Uh, Western New York has always had a strong delegation over the years. Uh, and, and now with the new people that we have, it's kind of exciting that we can come together to advance the interests of Western New York, which of course helped to advance the interests of the state. Uh, I've talked with a number of different people about the UB 2020 SUNY empowerment. It seems there's a tremendous amount of support 
for that. I've talked with Senator Skelos about that. Um, and, and of course, there might be uh, a need for negotiation, but I think that there's enough eyes on it, enough minds, Democrats and Republicans alike, that we can work together to try to move this along. Do you think it actually should become part and parcel of the budget negotiations so then it becomes almost like a, tra a trading chip, if you will, a bargaining chip that happens with some issues that sometimes get attached in the budget negotiations? Well, that's what happened this past year. Uh, I don't know what the future holds. Um, it may become a part of the budget negotiations, and if so, then we have to deal with it, or it might, might be its own separate piece. You know, keep in mind, as far as I know, there's no cost to this as far as to the taxpayers uh, of the state or any effect on the state budget, any direct impact with taxpayer dollars. So it's something that, um, from what little I know right now, can be moved without going through the budget process, but however we can move it. Because um, I, you, I'm looking forward to trying to help move it. Because the reason why I ask, given what had happened actually during the budget battle, Bill Stokowski, who of course is not returning to Albany, a Democrat who uh, is in the district adjacent, if I'm not mistaken, that he held up the entire budget process in hopes of getting UB 2020 to move along. And I, I wonder if you might be willing to do something similar. How much, how far would you be willing to go to get this issue done for your constituents? Well, if we, I'll talk beyond UB 2020 and SUNY empowerment. If it's an issue that I believe in, and it's something very important to the citizens of Western New York, to the citizens of the 59th district, if I have to stand and hold things up, then so be it. Um, I'll stand up for the things that I believe in, stand up for the citizens, and if it's holding up the budget of the entire state as we move forward, then that's something I would be willing to do if necessary. See, that's I, I'll, Let me add, though, I certainly hope it doesn't come to that, though. <laughs> right. I hope we can work together and do things different in the future than what we've seen the last couple of years. Well, that's fascinating, because if, in fact, the Republicans manage to take over the chamber, it will again be 32-30, which is the situation that we're seeing now that the Democrats had. And they had really a devil of a time trying to get 32 members all in a row. Now, if, in fact, yourself and other people or whoever took it upon themselves to decide that they would stand firm on an issue, you know, the whole budget would be held up indefinitely. Well, I, I have confidence and hope that the future is going to be different than what we've seen, especially the last two years, and that people have learned from it. The people being returned to Albany, I think many of them, their eyes are opened. And the new people coming to Albany, I'm excited to work with them, and I hope they're as well intended as I am. And I think what the last couple of years have highlighted more than anything else is that we need to work in a bipartisan manner to move this state forward. We've had problems. Uh, we know the problems, the corruption, the taxes, the spending. Unless we can overcome them and work together, we're not going to move the state forward. Well, Senator-elect Galvin, I want to thank you very much for joining us. We'll be seeing you in Albany shortly. I'm looking forward to it, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, Senator-elect. My pleasure. I'll be looking for you when you get here. Okay, Liz, thanks again. Be well.